Okay, hello and welcome uh, to my little spontaneous Monday stream. Um, I'm playing, currently I'm playing a game that I'm very, very fascinated about. It's called uh, Sazarin. And uh, yeah, because I'm playing it anyway, also for uh, a radio recording, I thought um, I can as well play it open for you to watch if you're interested. And also, it's amazingly fitting for the times right now. Um, I think there is no other game that is so, um, yeah, fitting for the inauguration and the change of uh, presidents in the US and also their program, their personality uh, that very much plays into their politics. Um, yeah, I would, I think I would start this game right away. Um, this game is also by a very small German team, uh, just for you to know. It's a mixture between, um, between, let's change, between, I would say, interactive fiction, text adventure, and maybe economic sim. Though the economic part is not that hard, but I think uh, not not uh, that present. But I would say it's like the mechanics remind somehow of of those. Um, I think the game is fantastic. Um, if you want to find out how well you are yourself suited for politics, <laughs> because. I know for sure. I hate political games. I, I would say I'm a very political person, but I don't like um, political games. You have to play, which which the make game also teaches you. Mm. Also, I, I'm not very good in remembering names. Also, not good suited for politics. For, poli for politics. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is I would start a new game because what's very interesting here is um, that you create, before you play the game at all, you're starting to create the personality of your president. Um, and yeah, you can build a Trump, you can build a Biden, you can build an Obama, I guess. Um, but not a Hillary Clinton, though, because you can't play a woman. Uh, so you can just play a man, but you can shape him uh, by deciding on his backstory. So I'm I'm starting with that. Um, but I thought I continue with my own um, game save uh, further, because I think, I mean, there will definitely be changes if you change the personality. But I think parts of the story will the same be anyway. And I think to to understand the game and to um, uh, yeah to to yeah to understand the game, we don't need to see it from the start. I think because there's also no tutorial. Okay. Yeah, I'm the president, or I become the president of Swordland. That's the country, and I'm. Warren, you opened your eyes to this world. You came from your first decision. Uh, on my first president, I said, I, I like, like, I'm, I, I, I think I built him after myself a little bit, or like, I, how I would create the perfect president. And my old came from a middle income family, and I think I'm going to build a Trump here. <laughs> so he comes from a wealthy family. Your parents named you Anton. As the only child of a successful businessman, you had the chance to grow up in a wealthy family. Life was easy at first, and you had the best education money could afford. However, things inside the Rain family changed due to the absence of your father. This affected your mother and you negatively. I think the name's always the same. You're always called Anton Rain. So, no change there. During history class at school, the bell started to ring unexpectedly. You heard a loud commotion outside. As everyone tried to figure out what was going on, the principal announced the historic revolution. The kingdom was no more. The Republic of Swordland was born. Okay. 
You did not fully understand. You were happy that you had the day off. You were somewhat worried. Okay, Trump would be happy to, to have the day off, I guess. Okay. After graduating, we passed the university exam with high marks. You had the opportunity to choose between several studies. You choose. Um, I think with my old president I chose law. Um, and I think I'm going for economics here. Yeah. During the first year you attended a lecture with David Whiskey. He was a well-known diplomat from the foreign ministry and the son of the president. After observing the hall in silence, he explained why market economy is a better option for Saltnet. He argued for a system where prices for goods and services are determined by the open market. Okay, you agreed in principle, you questioned what you were being taught, your only concern was passing the exams. Um, in many ways, uh, in the game, a, a big part of the game is you can choose between like liberal, open market, um, this kind of thing, demo democracy, but also you know being a communist country, having planned marketing, a market, a planned market, and uh, stuff like this. So this is like the big, uh, and also of course an autocracy where you, where only the leader decides everything. So I, I guess between those three points you you can swap in the game. I would say I agree. Soldiers entered the campus the evening ahead of the first election. Many were in shock as the uniformed man created a security cordon and started arresting the teachers. A group of students started gathering in protest. Along with their best friend Peter Vectorn, you decided to avoid any competition. Uh, this is interesting because, of course, uh, while your presidency, people will talk about your backstory and they will say, hey, we know you protested there. Right now, it's only a sentence. It doesn't really um, determine anything about, or later, not right now, but later, it, it doesn't seem to determine very much about your politics or how people really react to you. Um, it's just like a sentence that is there so people know what you did there <clears throat> as you entered the room you heard screams coming from the outside so try to bury yourself under the sheets you try to go to see it out to see okay sheets but the screams echoed it was a gloomy year okay like 20 years later, the majority of the students and teachers displayed their opposition. Thus, Lakeven became a target for the military regime. You didn't want to stay idle and decided to join. A human rights group, a student council, a political debate group. What would Trump do? <laughs> uh, I guess we choose this one. The dozens of debates helped you own your oratory skills while also helping you grow your network. Even though the debates were pretty heated between different groups, you all grew from sharing ideas. In one of the meetings, Peter introduced you to one of his friends, Monica, who was a volunteer for the Swedish League of Women. You were, immediate, you were immediately attracted to her beauty. So Monica is a very important person because she will be your first lady later in the game. I think you can't influence that. You you will definitely marry her. You can just decide on, you know, what kind of person you are towards her. I think my president was her diligence for whatever reason. So now it's beauty time. The book Politically Charged Environment led you to join the Red Views, the Socialists. Join Young Sorge, the Nationalists. Stay away from any political organization. Okay, interesting. Um, last time I was at the Red Youth, and those two groups, they will be the two groups in the game that will constantly uh, struggle with each other, you know, vandalize one another's uh, places, whatever. They are like, you know, just destroying your 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 hard work that you put into the presidency 
they will be trouble. So it's interesting what you want to choose because you're one of the parties that are there for the struggle. Uh, last time I chose Red you, so I guess I'm young sports now. <laughs> the radio relayed that the communist general Rickard surrounded Lutheran and his troops demanding their surrender. They refused and heavy fighting broke out across the country. You just couldn't believe it. The army was fighting among themselves. Swordland plunged into chaos. Rickard's sudden attack caused even more bloodshed in the country. He seemed different compared to the fascist Lutheran. In your opinion, however, he was more of the same. So you participated in the protest march. You were chanting, One nation, one system, one people, and the chaos, we want stability. United we stand, divided we fall. Okay. That is the best claim. What a stupid is. I want to create a, a bad president. But none of those are really bad, I feel. One nation, one system, one people, and the play of human stability. United we stand, divided up okay, here. I think this is the most boring <laughs> protest. You are marching against Rika. The students and soldiers supporting the coup gathered a few hundred meters away. Many socialists were among them. You knew something was going to happen. Um, uh, stay till that. Did I last time? I think, of course, I stayed. Oh, and I think I was. No, that is not a thing. Hmm. I think I stayed. There was a massive clash between two sides. Soldiers began to beat the students. Tanks started rolling forward. In this cha chaotic moment, you saw a young girl about to get run over by a tank. You ran to save her. Okay. I won. But all your efforts were in vain. You never forgot her face. Oh wow, I think that happened at the last in my last biography. The clashes escalated into a full-blown civil war. The horrors made you isolate yourself for a while. Monica helped you cope and love grew between the two of you. However, it was a difficult time for love. The chaos must end. The charismatic colonel, Tarquin Saul, orchestrated a sudden coup and brought, to an, uh, brought an end to the chaos. He wrote a new constitution and restored stability. The people saw him as savior. It's always Tarquin, uh, Tarquin Saul that, that is at this point, so there's no change here. Um, he wrote a new constitution and restored stability. The people saw him as a savior. He formed the United Southland Party and ran as a presidential candidate. In the first ever election, you voted for the United Southland Party you did not vote. USP won the election by a large majority. After graduation, we kept seeing Monica and noticed her interest to marry. However, a letter arrived from the military calling you to fulfill your, fulfill your compulsory service. It was time to serve your national duty. A devastating civil war broke out in a neighboring country, Velen. The distinguished Major Josef Lancea ordered you to lead your squad on a border patrol mission. It was a very cold winter night when you began marching out of Gamrin outpost. After several hours of marching through the snowy hill, distant noises were heard. Visibility was too low to confirm the source. The squad crawled forward in formation and found a spot to observe. A group of refugees had made it beyond the border fence. Um, this is interesting because um, the Valen Civil War, Valen is going to be a nation in the West next to you. And the problem that this country is poorer than Swordland and that refugees might come over will stand. And that is a point uh, the, the decision you make here will not backfire, but, but, but people will talk about your decision to escort those refugees back to the fence or to let them slip them through. And I accidentally set, escorted them back. And later in my presidency, he wanted to do more for refugees. And they always, they were like, yeah, but back then you escorted them back and you know how this is and stuff like this. 
Um, yeah, so but now I escort them back. The refugees were in despair when they realized that you were taking them back to the border. Screams and protests ensued as they were restrained. You delivered them to the border guards. After several months of military service, the duties ended and went back to civilian life. You and Monica decided to share your lives together. After receiving the blessing of her parents, the ceremony was held in both sort. During the same year, you were offered a high-paying job at the governing United Sovereign Party. It was important to start your career on a good, good foot, so you accepted it. Okay, working for the ruling party was the easiest path to power. The financial compensation was too great to pass up. It was the best opportunity to change the country for the better. I think for my good uh, president personality, I chose that, but of course now I'm going to choose this year. You became the economics assistant to one of the more experienced members of the Senate. You worked long and hard, saying later work, investigating hundreds of pages, economic reports. You were climbing the ladder. Seoul strengthened the Republic by removing the institutions, uh, institutions and symbols of the former kingdom from society. Things were also looking up for the country as the massive economic boom continued and people were the happiest they had been in a decade. Election time came and it was decided. President Tarkin Seoul was elected once more. When I started the game for the first time, I thought this kind of screen is like the game. <laughs> I mean, I saw the the other screens that look more like an economic uh, simulation, but I thought, okay, so this is what I do most of the time. Because it's very long, it's, it's really interesting how much um, bio facts they put in there. But it's also cool because by that you really get to know the personality of your president. Um, the five-year plan and the subsequent work regarding finances put you under a lot of pressure. But your significant contribution to the economic strategy triggered an invitation to meet President Tarkin Sol himself, who offered you a key position. You were to become the youngest member of the Senate. Yes, of course, I accept right away. As the youngest MP, it was difficult to connect with the influential inner circle. You needed allies. So you brought Peter as your right-hand man. Peter has a certain uh, personality. I'm not super far into the game, but he started to not have the greatest um, relationship with his wife. And you also see he's always late to meetings and he drinks a lot. And I, I really wonder, I think he's like the character who's programmed to really fuck you up. It, it feels like that. He's becoming your vice president. Um, yeah, I, I wonder if you can influence his personality as well, like if you say something to him. Um, the birth of your son, Frank, provided a brief moment in joy relief. You sacrificed work to spend time with your family, sacrificed family to prove your position in the party. Just like your father once did to you, you prioritized work over family. Along with Peter, you accomplished great things in the party. At home, Monica and friends felt your absence. Meanwhile, President Saw increased his authority over the years. His growing ego started to cause strife within the party. The cracks began to fill. President Saul barely secured a majority in the election against the opposition leader. Over the past year, people were growing discontent with cor corruption and the worsening quality of life. Meanwhile, while calls for the United Southland Party Congress became louder as the leadership struggles started to grow. Okay, you watched from the sidelines, kept supporting the president, joined, joined the internal opposition. <clears throat> I wonder if this has any influence at all. I think I watched from the sidelines the last time and I think it really doesn't change that much. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, of course, now I keep supporting the president. The contender for party leadership was Ewald Af Alfonso, a reformist and talented business magnate with great growing popularity within the party. You were trying to secure votes for President Sol, who noticed your loyalty and approached you with a lucrative deal. You had a meeting with him. The president offered you the position of Minister of Economy, 
for Mercy and Energy in the next government if you backed him in the upcoming. Okay, last time I rejected because I saw, I mean, he's already falling. I wonder if there's change. Yeah, I accept. The party congress was nothing short of impressive. The banners of United Swordland were decorative every, uh, every possible spot. Thousands of influential political figures, lobbyists and benefactors gathered for its turning point. The voting for the party leadership began. Yeah, of course I vote for <laughs> Ewald Alfonso. <coughs> the efforts bore fruit. Oh no, wrong. I was at Seoul. <laughs> Ewald Alfonso is his... Ah, his opponent. Okay. <laughs> Shit. I really... All those names I completely... Um, yeah, get astray with all those names. The efforts bore fruit as the cont contentious leadership vote was won by Ewald Alfonso. He will win anyway, it doesn't matter. During the Congress, Sol announced his retirement from politics. He knew the structure he had established was to stay. The country had become increasingly authoritarian. You were happy that Sol was finally moving, but troubled by the departure of Sol, didn't care about who was in charge. I say trust, because I'm social, uh, not socialist, nationalist. A month later, your daughter was born. Monica named her Diana. She motivated you during a tumultuous period in the party. The general elections were approaching. The United Southland Party was under the new leadership of Ewald Alfonso. You joined the party effort and campaigned for him. Did your best not to help him. Okay. During the general election, the main opposition leader was embroiled in a sex scandal with his secretary, diminishing their chances. The extensive privatiz privatization program proposed by Ivar Alfonso secured an election victory for the United Southland Party. Over the next year, you did your best in order to make Southland a better place, tried all that was necessary to climb up the ladder, or dedicated yourself to the party and its success. Okay, I would say tried all that was necessary to climb up the ladder. I really would love to see the numbers behind what I'm doing right now. <laughs> how how and when in the game this will backfire. Uh, the presidency of Ewald Afonso saw many bold reforms, but was followed by a serious economic recession. The other parties announced their bids for the 1953 election, but the unfair system hampered all opposition efforts to win. You thought that your party could not survive another crisis, were worried about the economic recession, worried that your reputation would be tarnished along Alfonso. Hmm. Okay, let's say the last. Together with Peter, your presence in USP grew and you became the face of the new wing in the party. You effectively took over the leadership as President Afonso lost control of the country. The moment to make a move had come. You blamed Alfonso for the crisis on television, bribed and extorted Alfonso's inner circle or advised Alfonso to step down. Hmm. I'm such an asshole, I'm going to blame Alfonso for the crisis in Tavish. <laughs> really very openly. The media backlash prompted President Alfonso to reshuffle his cabinet, but most of his inner circle abandoned him. The party eventually voted you in because of your charisma as a leader. Well, um, Following this, you announced that you would be running for president in the general election with Peter as your running mate. It's your turn. After visiting every city and town during the campaign, it's not such a big country, I guess, you made a speech on state and which you promised to enact democratic reforms, preserve national values. Okay, national values. Great nation of Southland. Due to the incompetent leadership, enemies both internal and external are influencing our glorious nation. Today, more than ever, we need to unite under one flag and protect our values. Crazy Swordland. Okay, of course, my last president, he was more like, yeah, we have to unite, we have to work harder, 
to make a better nation, to stand together, and we will fix the economy. That was so. That's really cool how you can write, or at least influence the writing of your speeches. <laughs> On election day, millions went to cast their votes. It was time to face the truth. Okay, that's also very interesting and very, very uh, important because those promises that you make, uh, you will get um, answer for that the the whole game. I mean, I'm still in chapter one, like I said, or two, no, I think one. And every time I'm not going to do what I promised, people will uh, ask about it. Okay. So, as Anton Rain, you have made many promises to the people of Sortland in order to gain their votes. They must be considered very carefully. Okay, so which kind of economy do I want to have? Promote free market, promote planned economy. Last time I did a free market, I think I want to continue with planned economy. Although I didn't agree with my, uh, although I agree, agreed with my economy professor that free market would be better but okay diplomacy that's really weird i mean it's all fake um fake countries and it's really a wild mix of different countries like a little bit of great britain a little bit of i think the author is uh, from turkey or at least his, his parents are from turkey um a little bit a very much American, but also I think Mex I see a little bit Mexican uh, in there. So it's it's very very diverse. The countries are like yeah like in a game, you know, they represent certain aspects, but not really um, com uh, a copy of complete countries. Um, so the West East thing is kind of weird, but I mean we all know what it's meant with that immigration. Okay, so we also tighten immigration complete opposite of my last president okay so this will be defi definitely the thing uh, I did with the last thing oh that's interesting are they different no I think military is my thing yes also the president looks always the same I kind of like his look because at first I thought, oh, he looks like too bland. But I mean, that's the point here. He can be everything. This can be the face of a dictator, the face of like the daddy, uh, uh, best buddy, president, the, I don't know, the communist leader. It's everything. Okay, two weeks passed since we won the election. And now I was about to be sworn president, the fourth president of Swordland. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I wonder... What I kind of like is that it's, it seems complex, but it really isn't okay maybe first i show you the map of the game it's also always the same it's not like um it's not really randomized so this is the country um what you basically basically do is like you read those little documents that are displayed over countries or over your cities um, there are none except I think those countries congratulate you for that you are now prime uh, that you are now president. Okay, all of them do congratulate me. No, they don't. 
they're going to uh, um, display their military, military uh, alongside the border. I think they try to, uh, they try an occupation of your country sooner or later, or at least occupation of parts of your country. So that's what you do. Um, also, this is your, your overview, like all the uh, decrees you, you made. Uh, everything's red, so your or most st stuff is red, so your country is pretty fucked. I think whatever you decided at the beginning is the same, the same story. Okay, that's what you see. Then you have your cabinet. It also seems to be. Huh? Is it always the same? Okay, this Mister Minister of Defense. Rural. She's also of justice. Yeah, I think the cabinet is also always the same. There's no difference here. Which is great because I think um, with uh, replaying the game, it's much easier to get into this. If if we really, like the portraits would change the second time you play it, the names would change. I think it would not. Um, really enrich the, 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 game, uh, the, the, the game for you. It would only confuse you because, of course, those, those people are kind of the same. Only you change because you change your biography. Um, yeah, okay, that's the seats. That's your party. That's the, I think it's worker party or something. People's freedom and justice party, okay. They are the nationalists. They are the independent. Okay. Oh, they are also important because I promise one of my main promises at the beginning of the um, of my presidential career um, was that I promised to change the constitution, and of course uh, the judiciary will play a big role. The Supreme Court. Um, because you have a big struggle with them because they're not going, they don't, they don't want to get rights stripped of them. So I strip everybody's rights, especially the president's rights, which is pretty weird to get those questions asked as a president, which right, that, uh, yeah, to agree all the rights or like, like, um, I don't know what's called, you know, the typical presidential rights that uh, Trump, for example, right now also has, like, being the military leader or having the atom bombs, stuff like this, um, that you give them to the assembly <laughs> and not keep them as a as a president. So that's very interesting to, to uh, deal with with those to, to get your own rights stripped away from you for the greater good. So yeah, um, yeah, and it's interesting because that's basically it. There's no more depth than that. Everything else you're going to decide or learn through those dialogues. Okay, um, right now I'm going to put in my old save game because I want to reset this, what I put also. I could also save this evil president somewhere. Ah, uh, when am I going to save this? So Give me a second. All right, so now we play with my um, with my president, which is like the opposite of what I just showed to you. <laughs> um, like I said, I think it doesn't matter where in the game you jump in because it doesn't have a tutorial. 
it doesn't have um, anything to bring you into the game, but there's also, I think, not really necessary because um, most stuff is really self-explanatory, so you just check the stuff that pops up and read it. At the beginning, it was a bit overwhelming because, you know, you, you meet a lot of people, you meet a lot of, get a lot of few new names, you think like you can't keep up with the different countries and all the stuff. Um, but it's in the end, it's not that much. And also the, the game does something very clever. So you don't have to deal with the whole politic at, at once. Um, but like at like first you have an economic meeting and you speak to your ministry of, uh, minister of economy and your, I think a second one will bother with trade and you know, it's the same. Uh, like like with two ministers and your advisor. And I also like uh, my my main focus was on the economy. So I had a, my my first main decision was, do I want to build a railway um, between those cities, like mostly in the already strong parts of the industry? Do you want to enrich them by building a top modern railway? This is what I did. Or do you want to make the um, the um, the infrastructure of the outer parts, like those, do you want to uh, build the streets new, I think, between those cities? And I said no. And this is also the area that the enemy called Romborg, they have a queen. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's a bit like, it's not really like Great Britain. It's like, uh, where do I see the leader? I don't see it. Bad related. <laughs> um, they they are uh, controlling the border with the military and strengthen it here. So I don't know what what's going to happen. But you know, I played Rain, the little smartphone game where you can swipe left or right when people come with your proposals because you are the king and you have to decide. And it's often fucked up. Whatever you decide later, it will fuck you up. And I somehow think because I didn't build the street here, that the rural people of Argenland are going to hate me. And when Rumburg offers them a hand, they somehow say, hey, we are better off in Rumburg or something like this. I don't know if, if the game works like that. I have no idea. It, I mean, it's not rain. It's, it's, it's more deep, it's deeper, but somehow it probably will backfire. Okay. So where am I? What are the news? Let's check. Morble mine disaster. A coal mine has collapsed in Morble. Is that Morble? That's Morble. Oh no, I can't reread the message. Okay. So that's what I meant by it's. There's only one thing you can do. Okay, that the stuff where the the pop-ups are over there or the little markers you click on them. And when they're gone, they're gone. There's no more depth, like re-getting them, re-reading them, maybe here. Uh, patience. Hmm. Okay, doesn't matter. So those are also not, I mean, I think you have to read them. Do you? It's just for, you know, understand the struggle of the country better, but there's also the news, so they sum up um, the, the current atmosphere in your country, but also they have different kind of um, newspapers. So like the whole sort of post, I would say it's like a, a medium. They, they, they say, really say what happens, you know, they don't exaggerate anything. They, they are like main, main, normal mainstream press, you know, good journalists just writing what happened. Um, as protests continue, nationwide tension is in some cities. Still, several major cities, including Delhi and Lekhaven, did have some scattered reports of ma uh, violence on Monday night. Tens of thousands in Delhi, Circa's hometown, Circa was a politician murdered, uh, walked in a memorial march. The police moved in on thinning crowd as evening settled, making arrests. Um, okay, 9,800 arrests related to protests. Okay. Okay, then we have Sortland today. Hmm, I can't really say what is there. 
How are they? I think they sometimes have a little bit different yeah, point of view, but it's not that different than the whole, uh, the whole South Coast. Um, Blackhaven Times? Hmm. I think... Hmm. How are they? They're also a bit different. I don't know. Can't say right now. Okay. Radical, I think it explains for themselves. <laughs> They're like the left paper. Shocking misogynist rally. Every day we are upheld by how deep the roots of misogyny goes in our country. We are upheld again when yesterday during the protest by Swedish League of Women, counter protesters showed up to disrupt the peaceful rally. In the resulting scuffle between the police, the protesters, and the mob, many were arrested from both sides. Okay, Sol needs to answer for his crimes. Looking at the history of everything wrong in our country, just only one figure that everyone points at. Tarkin Sol. That's how he looked, by the way. A bit harmless. Looks like the one guy of Game of Thrones, like the, the night shift guy. Um, he has devolved our country into something much worse than what it was before. It has committed crimes against humanity. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, economists, that's so interesting. They are always, it doesn't matter what happens in the country, they are just talking about the economy, which is kind of fun because it's always a, a stark contrast. They completely ignore, like, of course, not politic, but, you know, humans, <laughs> human drama. Okay, education privatization proven successful. Our editorial team immediately analyzed the SIPA report recently. Blah, blah, blah. It boils down to two major points. One is the privatization effort led by Prime Minister Alvarez that led to most schools in wealthier neighborhoods. And yeah, okay. And of course, Geopolitico, they are um, mostly dealing with what happens around Swordland. Also something that I find quite funny is like my budget, my government budget is <laughs> It's not like uh, 300 uh, billions point, 100 million point, whatever, it's one. <laughs> and that's, that's my personal wealth because of course I can also bribe or get bribed and that's, I guess, I don't know what, what this changes, but it's, yeah. Okay. Oh, what's this now? Young swords are stuck for terror attack. Okay, they're happening all the time. So, and mostly... Oh, here's another one. Young swords member found decapitated. Okay. The assault police department has found a decapitated body in an abandoned house where the victim was later identified as Kirk Leinke, a high school teacher and member of the local Young Swords. Um, yeah. So, like I said at the beginning, young swords are versus like red youth. They are like uh, rivals and rebelling all the time, really boiling up the country right now. And while I only want to deal like bringing up the country with, by building railways and doing good stuff, they are like destroying all my good work. All right, so when I click here, this, this is like the main, the capital of the, the city. Uh, my ministers are waiting. Sometimes they're also another, we, we meet and like, this area is like really bad. They have like resources, but bad economy, bad uh, infrastructure, bad school, everything bad. Bad is, bad is part. <laughs> um, uh, so we met in this, this city. So sometimes the meeting point is different, but it's mostly in the capital. And I can decide on reading or oh, a lot of reports um, and also do, of course, discussions and really uh, or like uh, su subscribing to verdicts or yeah, have, having discussions with my ministers. Okay, but I guess before I, I get into this, I should, you know, read about reports. Okay, Franz Richter, leader of the PFJP, recently outlined their demands for the reform package. Um, like, I work with the others, like I said, to change the constitution, which is kind of exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward if I, if I will make it or not. 
because in the assembly it looks good, but not in the uh, Supreme Court. Like I said, uh, the the uh, jurisdiction they don't want to get to, to lose their privilege. Um, recently outlined their demands for the reform hacker, she declared that without the implementation of term limits and limited decrees, it would be very difficult for the party to stand behind the reform package. Okay. Sounds good. NFP on reforms. Cesario Kiewer, he's like the, the nationalist party leader, has announced today that the NFP is completely against any threshold reform. He specifically faced that this would lead to unwanted elements entering the assembly and that is outright against any changes to the 10th percent threshold. I don't know what this means. <laughs> Bad president. Uh, I also signed one decree where I didn't understand anything and after that I, uh, of course I understood what I did, but later, only after I signed it, I don't know, it was, it was weirdly, um, weirdly worded. Uh, <laughs> it's really like the president tutorial for them. Um, many members of the USP led by Alvin USP is my own party. Uh, and the reformist wing of the party clarified their demands for the government in the party congress. For the upcoming constitutional reform, Alvin Klavan stated that without minister reforms, they won't be able to stand behind the reform package. All right, they can do that. Workers' Rights Bill nears completion. The Workers' Rights Act of 1954, proposed by Alvin Klavan and supported by Minister of Health, Pascal Bennywell is being prepared for the first draft review. Voices from the labor union showed strong signs of support. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, so. Like, sense of thoughts. Okay, sounds good. So now we come to the decisions. Okay, an investigation on the influence of the young source, the Red Youth Organization on the post-assassination unrest has concluded. Both organizations have officially organized or called for legal actions, but several low- to mid-level leaders from both have links to insightful actions that led to death, injuries, and instability. Okay, that's interesting because it seems like both parties in this game are like both assholes, okay? Uh, so that's what if you read the, the reports in the city um, closely, like both parties are really bad. But my president and his youth was part of the red youth. So I could, you know, only ban the young thoughts, the nationalists, or ban both because both are really bad. Or both, you know, <laughs> ban my own former party. <laughs> but I would really ban both because both are really bad. That's what I do. Uh -huh. So every, everything blinks. So first it blinks in the like country overview and the orders. You can see what happened. So you see all the decrees you you made. And of course there are like notes. I'm in turn three. And that's what I did first. Okay, what else? Read the report from Holzort. Oh, and I can also read the news um, how they reflected about that, what I did. Administration announces ban on young swords and red use. Effective immediately, the administration, blah blah blah. The ban also states that it's strictly illegal and forbidden to carry symbols, clothing, and anything that can cause a person to be identified as a young sword or a red youth member. They never said how, but I also never read it. Um, how you would oh, I, I really must confess I'm suddenly reading those texts I mean I'm glad they exist but I never read all of those texts because there are a lot of those like texts that it's biographies you can also about all your ministers or people you meet you can read texts like this and I'm really lazy so much text here um, okay what does the lack happen for little bit freedom restricted okay they don't like what I did Two of the most popular and symbolic political youth organizations have just been banned by the president of Sotland. The news came out of news uh, nowhere when administration made an official announcement 
blaming the instability, death and violence caused in the past months on both organizations. The expectation now is that uh, Calm will return to the country with all sides taking a step back to heal wounds, hopefully. But I guess that won't happen. Um, read and report from Hot Swords. Anti red use and anti young swords operation. Upon receiving the order, thousands of police officers conducted cease and desist operation against red youth and young swords. Uh, our forces closed hundreds of organizational offers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so they just did what I wanted. Most of the organization capacity of both entities have ceased, but clear operations continue. All remaining elements resisting the order are now being considered as violating the law and are being arrested. Okay, oh. Finalization of the drafted constitutional changes. Okay, now it gets exciting. I was walking into my office since today was the day to edit and make the final changes for the proposal to change the constitution of Solomon. The reform committed, uh, committee had finally bore tangible results and the breadth of the changes were about to be presented to It's amazing. Uh, it looks like I don't ever really work. All I do is like sitting in my office and waiting for people to come and I do the, the decision. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I must say, I really don't know how much actual writing work um, presidents or like the Bundeskanzler can really do. That's that's a moment where I really realize how few I know about the actual work. Um, I walked in the marble corridors of the palace, thinking about the huge decisions I was going to take. At the entrance of my office, my secretary, Livia, greeted me. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Livia. How are you today, sir? I'm perfectly fine. I'm about to make stressful decisions, so not feeling that great, I feel better now that I've seen you, Livia. I wonder if you can really, like, I mean, you have a wife, Monica, from the beginning, but I wonder if you can, like, really do the cliche secretary. Um, yeah, you know. A romance option. I'm perfectly fine. Good to hear. She paused before taking my coat. It looked like she had something on her mind. Mr. Rain, can you give me a hint about your reform plans? If you ask me, taking away the judge's immunity is long over, but it might anger a lot of people in this world. Um, you find out the dress of Sotland, sweetheart. I take that into consideration. Nothing been decided yet. That's none of your business, Lydia. Like I said, I'm like the buddy, I'm like friends with everybody, which is also not, I think, a good choice for politician. Um, I think nothing has been decided here. I hope you keep me informed. I take your coat now. Lydia left Hank up my coat. I entered my office and sat down. Not long after Peter, Peter, Lucian and Naya arrived. Naya is like Minister of Justice. He is my chief strategist and he's like Peter Ooh. Friend, vice president. Um, good morning, everybody. Blah, 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 blah. Peter placed the draft in front of me. After the modifications, we were starting the process. So we talked about, like, I think it's the third time we talk about the process, and they mostly asked me questions about the constitutions and what I think about it and what I would change. And I think this is now you know, in the third time going into the draft that I get presented now. So my decisions are like, maybe I can remake them, but I guess not. After modifications, we'll be starting the process. Can we go over each of them? Okay, very nice. So, <coughs> well, apart from the first two sections, decreasing the Supreme Court's authority and limiting the presidential vetoes, nothing else has been agreed on anonymously. We could start talking about section three. This is about the impeachment process of the president. Very, very important topic right now. Currently, in cases of high treason and breaking the constitution, the Supreme Court may impeach and try the president. Most reformers want impeachment to be initiated by the assembly. They think they do not have any power over a potential rogue president that would abuse their power. It's, that's what I meant. It's really, really interesting as a president to sign a decree um, or like like a paper that 
will be able to impeach you if you do like really something wrong. I mean, it's really like a rogue president. But it's really, really interesting to think, you know, to do this in this position. Um, but, you know, mostly we see it from the outside and of course we, we will want him to, to do this. It's important to have that. Not sure if the correct to chastise the president did this much no. The assembly should have oversight over the president. This law is particularly dangerous for you in this case. We'll be going against the old guard. And if you so it's like the old in my party to which I describe a group of influential individuals in the government. And if you prove to be successful in the assembly. They will be looking for anything they can declare unconstitutional to tackle you. All they need is the Supreme Court, court to impeach you. Which is very interesting because a big part of the Supreme Court is not on my side. So last time we went through all the members of the Supreme Court that would support me and would not support me. And it's really hard to get like the necessary votes for changing the constitution. So it's so much you have to consider here. It's really not something you, you're you just casually playing in the, in the evening. Um. Okay, what if you don't succeed? The court can have me impeached for this. Maybe reforms are not a great idea after all. We should define a better impeachment process. We could even remove impeachment altogether. Ah. <laughs> what should I do? Oh my god. Okay. Okay, maybe we define a better impeachment process. Yes, we will be collaboratively working on the specifics. <clears throat> Section 4. This is regarding the appointment of ministers. Currently, the president is free to appoint everyone from the members, the members of the assembly. Nobody else is involved within the process. There's definitely a demand to involve the assembly in the process. That's going a bit too far. We could introduce a confidence vote. I agree, we should involve the assembly more in the process. So be too friendly. <laughs> I'm not going to allow this. I think a confidence vote's not that bad. That was my suggestion as well. I'm sure the referendum is completely supported. The fifth section is about our infamous electoral threshold. Most referendums want to lower the threshold as much as possible. Mr. Richter and his F uh, PFJP definitely wants to see change through this top. They find our 10% threshold to be anti-democratic. Which is something I also agree with. Yes, but this is a delicate matter. The party, and I mean not even Alvin, wants us to change the threshold. They think that this would destroy our party in the long term. Not wrong. The 10% threshold is what it allowed us to control half of the assembly with only a 30% majority in the elections. Yay, <laughs> Polit politics. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like, do you really understand? I mean, it's, of course, it's written by, by a person that is not a politician, but in a, in a way, you know, that's, that's real life material. And you really come to understand how politics work. I mean, we had this discussion like in the EU, I think, is it four years ago, three years ago, like that smaller parties are not so easily let in, like, for example, the Pirates or like the German Die Partei, they won't have a chance in the next EU voting, I guess, because of this threshold. And also in Germany, we have this threshold. Um, and of course, bigger parties, for exactly that reason, <laughs> try to keep thresholds like that. So there's a truth to that, and you have to play as a politician, but you also want to play like with your heart and in your um, opinion. <laughs> so what am I going to do? But the high threshold is the reason why Sorbish politics has become so isolated. We should definitely do work to decrease the threshold for better representation. Do we think it would really hurt the party? This is out of question. Hmm. Okay. Not wrong. The 
ten percent. Is this out of question? What is out of question? Okay, let's get a little doubt here. I think this is a national matter, Mr. Rain, not partisan one. It is a matter of both when we have the Communist Party and the Worker Party of Bolivia getting more than 5% vote in the last elections. Uh, the Workers' Party of Gludia, they are also like, uh, you know, making stress right now. Um, I think they also have terrorists. Is it the Workers' Party of Gludia? But they are also like terrorists. Or part of them are terrorists. I don't know. Uh, so, we want... We don't want them to succeed. Decreasing the threshold might mean opening their way into the assembly. Of course, that would also mean the USP might lose its majority in the assembly. So, if our own democracy is the reason of our downfall, we will have to accept it. I think my kind of naive and positive president would totally say that, but we also know what, what will happen of that. Don't worry if these reforms will be even more popular. We can't just give away our more, more majority like that. We can't allow communists to enter the assembly. Okay, let's do this. I know it's, it is a delicate matter, but you still have time to think about these. Okay, section six. This is about presidential decrees. Reformists demand more limitation to the president's ex executive powers. Mr. Ricula has demanded them to be completely removed. I have suggested to bring some limitations to the decrees regarding their applicability. While we keep them, we should try to make sure that they will only be used in emergency situations. We could also make it dependent on an enabling act from the assembly. Sure, it would make the whole process longer, but as long as we have a majority, nothing really changes. Okay. I don't think presidential re decrees need any reforms. We'll work with the reformers to limit the use of decrees. I may need to think a bit longer on it. Yes. France will probably demand that we remove them completely, but he forgets that Sordland is a presidential republic. Next one is section 7, term limits. Uh oh. I don't aim to leave any time soon. We keep the unlimited terms. Terms limits are necessary. Term limits? Okay, let's do this. I agree, we can't allow somebody like Sol holding onto the seat for two decades. Decades again. <laughs> like in Germany. Hey, if people keep elect, uh, electing one person, that means they really are content. The masses scar scar of change. Even Sol knew it. Yeah, truly. But he will leave it to the president to decide. Yes, he did. But it took a long time. I agree, people should be able to elect the same person if they want to. I will make time and seriously consider the option before setting up. Yeah, we definitely need a limit. Yeah, it's weird. Looking at America, I would say we definitely need limits. But on the other hand, in Germany, we don't have that. But I still think we, we should have that. I mean, if they are really good people, you, you're going to miss them, but you know, it's, it's not really, really changed to younger people and next generation. Now I move on to the eighth section, we are reaching the end. It's a question about the immunity of the judges. While the anti old guard sentiment is increasing, there are talks that taking away the immunity would give us authority over judicial. Ooh, I have no idea about that. I do not support taking away the power of yourself, Mr. President. The judiciary must be independent and long-lasting. While I agree that current court members are problematic, this is no way to resolve it. The law is supposed to ensure the judiciary's independency by giving legal protection so it can't be pressured. Well, they need absolute immunity in theory, but look at what, what reality got us. We've got to deal with the most corrupt chief justice in the world with no chance to deal with them. Yeah, this guy um, like pressured me into keeping the constitution changes down. We should respect the immunity. They should be able to be impeached. Why do I get to be impeached? But not that, yes, true. absolutely true. <laughs> but it would be tougher to persuade the judges with this. 
Mrs. Edmonds may not want to cooperate with, with you if they believe you're going to get rid of them afterwards. What? And the last one is the question about Saul's legacy. Basically, his member of honor law. It gave him absolute immunity even when he's retired. He's permanent member of the assembly as well, but luckily he doesn't really attend anymore. <laughs> Strange. I wonder if in any country this, this exists, this thing. I have to take a screenshot. <clears throat> According to the Constitution, the Member of Honor not only has legal immunity, but the state also covers most of the expenses, as well as providing security all the time. It can only be given to someone by an absolute majority vote in the Assembly and the approval of the President. That's why only Tuck and Sol has the title and gave it to himself right up the military coup. This law is basically made to save the colonel, the colonel and it has a symbolic importance for salt mine because of it. We must get rid of the senseless law that protects them. We should be able to face justice for the atrocities that has taken place during his rule. I agree we should abolish this position here yeah, totally. No, I think we should respect the law. We could keep the title but take away the immunity because I can take the immunity after him. Every president should gain the title after their term. I really love that they got the whole range of, of decisions, yeah. Yeah, abolish the position. The reformers would be completely behind that. Well, regardless of what Mr. Reigns decided, we will need to work together to push this agenda. Let's start working on the draft. So thank you, Audrey. Ooh, what's this? Oh my god, now constitution voting. Okay. According to Article 77 and 82, the President may veto a bill by returning it to the Assembly to the written statement. The articles do not contain any information on how to override a veto. As a consequence, the President has an absolute veto power that cannot be overridden by the Grand National Assembly under any circumstances. Okay, I would say limited veto. The new constitution will allow the Grand National Assembly to override the veto with a third, five, six percent majority. The new constitution will not include any veto powers. The president may not block any legislation passed by the Grand. No, it's not that right. Passed. Oh, no, that's better. Uh, problem is in dialogues. Like the other ministers told me, okay, if you choose that or that, you won't get like the full majority on votings. And I must say, I've forgotten what's very important for them and what not. I think the reformers, they want complete control over everything to, uh, to give the control to the assembly and strip away control from the president. Um, so I guess if I do this, it's better. But I wonder if the game would allow me that and I still can get my constitutional changes. So hard. Uh, oh God, the new president may not block any legislation passed by the time. I think. Uh, it's better. I trust that. Okay, five of the Constitution and the amendment may be proposed by members of the Assembly. A two-thirds majority, okay, remove Supreme Court's vote. A constitutional amendment will not require the vote of the Supreme Court. This, and I can't even trust on that. I can say next. Okay. Impeachment process, okay. Ooh. The president of Sortland is not responsible for the actions performed in the exercise of presidential duties, except in the case of high treason or violation of the Constitution. In such cases, the president may be impeached by the Supreme Court in joint session with an absolute majority of its members. Therefore, the impeachment process only includes the Supreme Court, and it gives, okay, no, I don't want the Supreme Court. The Assembly and the Supreme Court. The Assembly may have each, not the Supreme Court. So, 
that maybe I should include the Supreme Court so they like to they like to leave it with the two thirds majority vote in both elections. According to the Constitution, the President appoints the ministers to the Council of Ministers from elected members of the Assembly. This requires no confidence vote from the Grand National Assembly. Okay, that's for the confidence vote. Because I don't want them to choose the ministers. That's strange. According to Article 50, a political party needs a minimum of 10%, so that's a threshold. Uh, we don't change that. Haha. <laughs> okay, according to Article 18 and 51, the president is able to issue decrees in political, social, and economic issues that would carry the force of law. They could not contradict the constitution and are subject to radical review. Therefore, the president may issue decrees in many subjects which go through the Grand National Assembly. However, the assembly may pass legislation on the same subject, override presidium and things. Um, decrees require an enabling aid. Remove decrees. Issue decrees that would carry the force. The president will not be able to issue decrees that would carry the force of the law without an enabling May pass legislation. Oh no. According to the Constitution, the president shall be elected for four years. However, there is no mention of the term limit, allowing one individual to be able to run, be re elected, and two terms. Let's say two terms. The Constitution gives the justices. Justices of the Supreme Court, total immunity, and describes no procedure of impeachment. They should can be impeached by the Senate. So. I guess the Assembly is going to like that, but not the Supreme Court, of course. Honorary membership of Target Store. Abolish honorary members. So every president is not a member. Abolish immunity of honorary members. And remove from it. A member of honor will no longer have an absent. Yep. Done. Okay, you are about to make constitutional changes to Swordland. Are you sure about your decision? Yes. I still get my safe game. After I <laughs> if that were also the reason in uh, the, 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 the thing in real life. Oh, my economy is really down. Why, why do I only have one? One point left, it started with three. All I did was for the economy, what's happening? After I made the final changes for the proposal, it showed, I showed it to my team. They read the changes and entrusted this tested among them, amongst themselves. Right. Lucian spoke afterwards. Looks like the amendments are ready to be proposed. Any comments before we proceed? I will say that I do not agree with the new law that gives the assembly the power to impeach judges of the Supreme Court. I'm also against the Chief Justice and his obstructionist behavior, but even if we get rid of all of them, the new judges will be less independent with this law. They will be scared <coughs> to go against the administration when it's needed. Okay, that's great. They need their protection to do their job. Otherwise, the new ones will be pawns just like souls or guards. But it's more important that we get rid of the old guards, Mrs. Morna. After the obstacles are gone, we can strive to make it better. Yeah, yeah, totally. However, he turned to me. You have to be careful, Anton. I'm sure you'll be fine, but with all that's happening out there, we need to prepare against these threats one way or another. The Constitution is not yet changed. We prepare in the meantime. Well, I think we can proceed now. We will work on the wording of the proposal with our legal experts before we propose it. In the meantime, you must introduce this proposal to our party. You need to need to a strong speech to get them behind you. But I advise you to take first talk to the leaders of both conservative and reformist wings of the party. As far as I'm aware, Ms. Glavin, support for the uh, reforms already, Ms. Tory, will be the real problem. She began the real heavy wave after we left for the ex 
Okay, any advice in regards to dealing with them? Any advice for the speech? I will do that. As Mr. Vectoron said, Mr. Glavin would probably be easier to pursue it. We need to unite the party under this, so this, his support is vital. Miss Gloria will be tougher to break. The problem is that she's capable of turning the moderates and the conservatives against us. So it's Mr. Gavin and this is Miss Gloria. There. So those are them. As much as I don't want to say this, if she makes demands, change proposal, you may need to give in. I wonder if I really can change the proposal, uh, the, the constitutional, how I wrote it, because it felt like if if they don't take it like it is, or if I if I didn't take the right bet, it's just not not gonna happen. I wonder how many things I can change really. Um, not the face to it, but wish you good luck with the party, so I think we can end the meeting here. Wait, there was was this other question about my speech. <laughs> I guess I can't. I get only one advice per time. Reform committee started preparations. Vice President Victor reported that, along with Lucian Gallade, the committee has started working on written aspects of the package as per the needs outlined previously. They were soon to get the legal team involved to complete the writing process. The needed 150 signatures for the proposal has started collected in the... Okay. I have signed off the draft. It's just the draft. Can be changed, I guess, I hope. Restaurant and dinner with the business council members. Okay. We were in Lackhaven to work with the business council to assess weaknesses in the economy. Simon organized the dinner with the affluent economic figureheads in Swartland. When we arrived, the streets were bustling with activity, even though the atmosphere in the country was tense. Lackhaveners didn't seem very worried. Together with Walter Tusk, it was that millionaire businessman, Edith Agnock, oh, I didn't, don't know her, huh? banker serves as the chairman of the central bank, Mik uh, Mikhail Avon, Swordish businessman, businessman, economist, and statesman, and Simon Hall, okay, he's, my, he's my minister, yeah. Uh, we entered a renowned Asteria restaurant by the coast. A short blonde man with embroidered pocket read manager greeted us and waved his arms in excitement as he told us how pleased he was to have us in his establishment. Viewing with pride, he led us to a private room and got us seated at a large table covered for the occasion with a maroon tablecloth. Maroon is like the color of my state. My, my, uh, our, uh, yeah, building where we sit in. We were quickly served as a group of servants. Servants. A group of servants. What spoke, spoke as they started taking our orders. I recommend the Lecaven salmon. President, you have to taste the local delicacy here, the best and sort. I appreciate the advice, but I don't like salmon. Or the Lecaven salmon. Or the traditional sorted bean stew. Or the lesbian pasta. It's really like, okay, does that change everything? Does it just make me insecure or <laughs> whatever does that? Okay, let's order like a sun. Very important decision right now. <laughs> The servers placed glass in front of each of us and served bread and water. After they were done taking orders, they quickly left us alone in the private room. Mr. President, I don't have the possibility to thank you for coming today. Your presence means a great deal. Indeed, sir. It's an honor to dine with you. It's great to be here, Mr. President. You should thank Simon for organizing the meeting. No need for that. I hope everybody enjoys the evening. Simon gestures to an expensive looking red wine bottle that one of the servers had just brought to the table. Mr. President. Okay. A 
actually, I haven't drank. They, the game often asks me if I want to drink in certain times, like when I take a pause or something. And I never drank any alcohol. Now I drink it, and I also wonder, does it change something? <laughs> like always, when I can get relaxed in the evening, the game asks me if I want to drink whiskey. And I wonder if I can become an alcoholic when I drink, you know, whiskey in the game. Or if I just overthink it and it's just a line of dialogue. <laughs> I took a sip. It was bitter. Honestly, it tastes like any other wine. How is it? Is the taste to your liking? It has a sour and delicate veg vegetal character. Is it acacia I'm tasting? It tastes like heaven. It's fine. It tastes like any other wine. <laughs> What? This wine doesn't even need testing. Should I fill your glass or would you want another drink, sir? It's okay, I think it. I think I'm good. I won't have anything for now. As with Mr. President, he grabbed the bottle again to pour some into what passed ice. You didn't have to serve us, Mr. Hall. There's a server around here. After filling everybody's glasses, Simon stood up and raised his glass. I'd like to raise a toast to all of us here today. We are meeting here tonight in difficult times, but I believe that with hard work, cooperation and trust, we will get through this period as well. I'd like to thank Mr. Rain again for its decisiveness. When it comes to economic policies, I'm sure we will stop the recession. I thank Mr. Task for being here with us today. His presence is an honor. And of course, my colleagues from the Business Council, Mrs. Eknard and Mr. Avon, without you, none of these would have been possible. Let's strengthen future cooperation and growth for a prosperous sort land. Blah, blah, blah. The food tasted amazing. So, I did find food and this one there. Not a big fan of fancy food. I must admit that it's very tasty. Yeah, I'm like middle class background person. Fine food is like fine art, but this particular one is a masterpiece. It's a pain. This can't get out. It's an experience that chef must sit. I'm this. Says the man visiting one of the finest restaurants in Sondheim. Don't blame it on him, Mr. President, to choose the place. How are things going into in the Maroon Palace? He was the name executive friend of Swedish government. The pressure must have increased after you attended that funeral. The pressure was already high, not much has changed. It did, but it was the right decision. I have to say the future is looking good. It's tough, but our work on the new course continue. <clears throat> the wonder is how much of my inner do I give to them? I, th I don't think that I want to tell everything, uh, everybody how hard this work is. The pressure I did. I have to say the future is looking good. I'm just super confident here. So that's great to hear. Yeah. As we conversed with Michael, I heard Walter raise his voice in an apparent argument with Edith and Simon. We both stopped to listen. Acacia knows the right way of doing business. The approach to the world is real and raw. I prefer the, the cutthroat approach in comparison to the Well, I mean, it's nice. It's a nice country to visit too. I've traveled very often in business trips. All countries are nice to visit if you have the cash. Money does turn the world around to the least you can buy with it. Certainly not all exactly. How about the people who don't have extra cash to spend? Working hard for the What about disease? What about death? What about everything that is wrong with the world? These are matters beyond our lives. We should focus on the better, better man of ourselves and enjoy that what we have instead of worrying about what others don't have. Interesting to tell that a president of a country. Truly an egoistical way to look at the world. Both men plant trees whose shade they shall never sit under. Uh, what? It's just facts. Life's short and there's only so much we can do. Why not focus all the energy on ourselves? Walter is taking us down the rabbit hole again, by the way. I saw the construction of the railway has already started as my concerns about the company, but I hope they do a good job. That was also very, very interesting because I could choose which company would construct the railway. And there was like three possibilities. One was like the state owned construction. They are like very old school, but they know their work. They did stuff like that before, but they are very, very slow and take a lot of money. 
and yeah. Then there was uh, the second company, uh, they were privately owned, they tried to bri bribe me beforehand and they are like the right for that kind of job, but they also have like, um, yeah, they take money. And then there was a company where I didn't have to pay budget because they were below budget, but they were they, they, a company that was also very modern, but they were not experienced in this kind of scale, project scale. They normally did smaller projects. And I chose them because it sounded kind of good, but also, you know, it was clear that this could, you know, be fucked up by the game. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's interesting to hear that they have concerns. I'm really wondering if the railway gets built or if there will be problems. Uh, that project will surely boost our economy if done correctly. The mood is already becoming covered. I have to congratulate Mr. Rain for starting such a massive project. Uh, of course, Mr. Hall also deserves credit. Of course, our great community. Sir Joe Kemming, why? I thought you said you were great at economy. I've heard that you've bought a new villa assignment. I don't comment on rumors, but I make an exception since we are among friends. It's true. You are doing a great job, so you deserve it. And you will have not much, especially in the economy when people are suffering. Where is the problem? Why? Yeah. I mean, this is really an interesting question, but would I ask that among like the people? Hmm. I already had my eyes on the area. Plus, it wasn't intended to be public. It's a small seaside villa at the outskirts of Conrad. It's just a modest house with a swimming pool and a small golf course on the property. A small golf course, all right. Great city to buy real estate. And Conrad is seeing a surge of investments. So your brio became enabled to master the quarantine. Modest, are you being sarcastic with me? No, is there a problem? Oh, come on, leave, leave the man be president. Edith was sitting to my left, gently put her hand over my arm for a few seconds. Come on, let's not talk about finance or politics for now. We came here. Relax. Isn't that right, gentlemen? They nodded at her and took a sip from their drinks. She slightly leaned towards me. So, Mr. Rain, why don't you tell us what's behind the strong character of yours? I've heard that you were brought up in the capital and experienced all the power shifts as it happens. Is that right? It must have been tough. So that's where my backstory definitely comes in. I try to leave my past behind and focus on today. It's who I have to become that matters. There's still few times in the capital, but I've learned a lot of, about politics. I didn't suffer much thanks to my family. We didn't have much, but I was stable. Okay, yes, that. It all makes sense now. I've never met your family, Mr. President. How are they doing? If you don't mind me asking. I prefer not to talk about my family. We don't talk much since I became president. They're doing great, we have no problems with you. Let's do this, which is not too completely. That's great to hear. Your son must be very proud of you. My family is everything. My advice would be um, to make sure that Frank has a solid relationship with you. He is your future after all. I'm trying my best to be a good father to him. He seems to be somewhat introverted. He's going to, through a teenager period, it's still good to be connected with him, he's a little shy. It's also interesting how you can talk to your kids, you know, you can scream at them if they if they are strange because they are um, can't cope with your situation, you being president, and also they watched uh, the family get attacked. And uh, yeah, your son's reaction, you know, he, he gets back to his room, he doesn't talk much, stuff like this. And you could scream, scream at him in that situation, or you know, be understandable and kind and this kind of stuff. And it also reflects, of course, in the relationship. And I also wonder if you scream at him, if he like becomes a terrorist and shoots you one day, or you know what, <laughs> how far the game goes with your decisions. Um, he's going through the teenager period. It's difficult to connect with him. He's a little shy. The kid can handle himself. He doesn't need anybody else. Why do you even care? Yeah, let's say this. Wish that was my son's biggest problem. Darren seemed to be doing fine. I saw this, this yak party in Banffy made the local news. 
Well, the rascal didn't even ask for permission to use the yacht and just took it. He basically stole it. Good news is that I finally convinced him to go to the university. He will study economics in Blackhaven Business School. That's a good choice. Having a degree in Solvent separates you from the rattle. And we especially need more people who understand economics. Maybe your son will be a great future economist. I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> but I agree that we need more economists to enter politics. Thankfully, we have a president who seems to be as well versed in economics as our fund teacher. I'm very confident in your abilities to fix your, uh, our reset. Yeah, well, it doesn't look like that right now. <clears throat> or, or is red bad and, and white is good? I don't think so. I think it should be completely red. I don't know. Uh, did I read it wrong? Uh, I'm very confident in your abilities to figure out a session. Look at what course study. studying doesn't get you to the finish line. Afonso was an inspiration for all wrestlers. The end the mess because of him is going to fail you and nearly destroyed us. Thank you. Even. I mean, after all, he did reform stuff, so I guess. He was, he truly wanted to transform this country to a modern nation. His term was very difficult, though, because. A correction, it was the politics that destroyed it, it was the only guard. Ah, uh, they will destroy me as well, I guess. What do you mean? I always had a gut feeling about sudden fate. Oh, of course it was their big threat. I believe that too. He threatened their economic power base over the country, though a vast privatization plan. They removed him and backed you after. And then they removed me. Walter stopped with the conspiracy theories. I think we've had enough friends. After long silence, followed by some chit chat, Walter ordered one of That's one good looking bottle. The waiters brought one of the finest occasion whiskeys and it was time for a toast. The toast. I am not going to drink. Simon, would you give a toast again? Let me toast. I raise for our health and happiness, to constructive and beneficial future, for our wealth and success, to an equal society with class differences. Mark Nevis Court. A Mark Nevis Court is like the slogan of the country. I forgot what it meant. Um, success, whatever. Uh, I rest to our health and happiness, constructive and beneficial thing. Say that sounds good. They say hope dies last. To the future. Yes. I think it's time we call it tonight. It is without most of us better than tipsy at this point. I want to thank you, Mr. President, for joining us, and you, Simon, for putting all this together. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for joining with a bunch of ugly rich Okay, did this really bring anything? It felt like it was for shallow. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't completely shit on, on the rich guy. Like, I was again the little boy. The moon was shining bright as everyone except Walker left in their luxury class. President, a moment of loneliness. The bribing starts. The copy inside has small VIP numbers. Ignore me. What do you want? Usually, the Lothaberg spokesman doesn't directly comment on the administration, but I'd like to say a few things since this was a special meeting. Finally, a president that listens to the people, to the small people. It won't be easy to pass the new constitution through the assembly and the Supreme Court. We could help you get it through. If you in return help us with a few economic requests, walked a little cigar and took a few drinks before continuing. The consensus is that we see eye to eye in the economic direction you have taken by promoting a market economy. <laughs> there are many who put their trust in you. 
He rejected our previous discreet offer to pick another construction for the, exec for the execution of the first mega infrastructure project that was a train thing. This action led to a disappointment in the group. We are aware of the upcoming tax meeting and it will be a step in the right direction if private corporations would get a tax cut. To boost the economy with job creation, of course, and the positive side effect would be our support for the administration throughout the entire term. Uh, I will give large private corporations a tax reduction. I will not take decisions objectively and promise you anything. North America will not influence me. Hmm. Okay, let's do this. I'm very satisfied to hear this. To us and the prosperous future of Scotland. It is assuring to know that we are allies. Glad we could come to an agreement for them. See you, President. Was left and sad search came to pick me up. I entered the car and we drove to our residence in a haven. Sedge took a uh, seaside. Amazing. I, at one point I could even, so Serge is my, my driver and I, at one point I could decide on giving him my money, like one, minus one, <laughs> to the education of his children. I would wonder if that would change anything, changed anything. Okay. Uh, at this point I played nearly two hours and I think I would stop here. I think you got a, a, got a good uh, impression of the game and how it works. So that's basically what you do all the time. You read the news in the cities, um, you read the, the news in the, in the newspapers, and then you make decisions like what's the next year budget allocation. Yay, white food. Sounds great. Um, what's cool, there's only one like major task at one time. You know, you, you, you do this and then it continues. It's not like bam, 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 bam quest here, quest there. It's, it's only one major decision at one time, so that's very, um, in a way, relaxing <laughs> and not, not completely um, real-life uh, stress put into the game. Um, yeah, so, like I said, I would stop here and make a transition. Uh, thanks for watching. I really, really recommend this game if you're interested in politics or uh, at least uh, interactive fiction games or, you know, this, this kind of stuff. Economic um, simulations. No, it's not really an economic simulation. It's really like, if you like politics, this is really the game for you. Um, I really enjoyed, enjoyed it so far. It, it seems to have uh like four chapters i guess i think the, uh, the uh, achievement say it has four chapters or maybe five i'm not sure um and i played already about five hours and i'm still in chapter one so it's crazy what this game has to offer i mean the the introduction part where you build your biography alone has like 30 minutes uh, content um yeah, so if you like this kind of stuff, I think you can't make anything wrong. I think the writing is superb. I love this game so far. Uh, have a nice evening. Uh, on Wednesday, we are going to play um, more uh, interactive fiction. If you are doing German, uh, if you're good in German. Um... Hey, Friedrich, did you watch it? <laughs> So maybe it's an, it's a, I, I think you know, you like politics, uh, politics and political games. So this might be uh, perfect for you. I think. Yeah. Uh, like I said, on Wednesday, we have, um, another stream about, um, interactive fiction. At uh, this time, it's about Inco games, uh, the guys who did 80 days and, um, Heaven's Vault and also, um, what's the third game? Yeah, King Arthur something game. All right, uh, have a nice evening. A good nice evening to you, Fidel. So, <laughs> all right, bye. Ah, uh, wait, intro transition. Bye.